Hello everyone and welcome to Just Another 20 Something with me, Marissa. How is everyone doing today? <laughs> um, I'm not gonna lie, my day has just took a weird turn. Um but I I'm not gonna get into it. <laughs> wow, super ominous of me. I just I don't wanna jinx anything, so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna leave it as it's kind of a weird day for me. But um, we're gonna we're gonna go and be positive and we're gonna pretend that it's actually a great day. We're gonna take the weirdness and we're gonna turn it into goodness and everything's fine. <laughs> um, but yeah, how are <laughs> how's everyone else? Hopefully good. I hope no one else is having weird or hard days, but if you are, I totally get it. We are in the same boat and sometimes it just happens. Um, but how are we liking the new intro music? I've been having to, as you could tell, there's been a lot of technical difficulties through the different episodes that we've had so far, and I am starting to fully figure out how to edit, how to get everything together. And so the first the first time I actually figured out how to apply music, I then switched podcasting hosts, which means... I don't have the music that they provided for me, obviously. So I had now had to find a new music intro to put because I was like, yeah, you know what's missing? Um, the music in the beginning that everyone else has. <laughs> and I really wanted that for my podcast. So here we are. Let me know what you guys think. Um, I feel like I like it. I don't know. I feel like it's a cute vibe. Again, let me know. Um, you can leave me a review, actually, and let me know in the Apple Podcasts review because we made it. We made it to Apple Podcasts. I literally cannot believe it. <laughs> oh, it was a long road to get here, <laughs> um, but I'm so happy that it finally happened. I That's where I listen to all my podcasts, and I know a lot of my friends do exactly the same. I am so happy that my podcast is now on Apple Podcasts just so exciting. It's oh, really cool, really cool. Okay, so for today's episode, I thought um, we could take it back to our monthly favorites. I think I want to do this maybe every beginning of the month. I was kind of thinking we could look back on the past months and see, you know, how we were feeling about those and then look forward to the new months. So then in the next month, we could be like, oh, hey, um, the things that I talked about that I'm excited for December, did that happen? Yes, it did. Or no, it didn't. <laughs> could either be a fun activity or maybe a terrible one, but we're going to go with it. So today we're going to talk about some November faves. I just have a few. And then we're going to get into some December dreams, which I actually have quite a few that I want to touch on today. So let's get started. So for my November faves, um, there's not really a lot, there's not, <laughs> I was about to say there's not much and then there's not a lot. There is not a lot that really happened in November, obviously. Um, this month was a lot slower just social wise and doing things wise. Um, cases have started to go up with COVID, so it obviously just hasn't been a very good idea to really be out of the house very often and seeing other people. So this month was very slow. But one favorite that I do really have social-wise is I got to FaceTime a lot of friends in November. And that was really nice. That was super needed. I talked about that a little bit in my last episode. Um, so go listen to that if you haven't. <laughs> Um, where that was actually one of my favorite things is that I've been able to FaceTime a lot of my friends because obviously I haven't been able to see them in person. And so it's really great that we have the technology to see each other's faces and get to talk. And it's just really nice. And you get to do it in the comfort of your home, which is always pretty exciting. <laughs> yeah, so that's kind of that favorite. No activities, really. I mean, except for Thanksgiving, but, you know, I already touched on that, so I'm not going to go any more into it. But I do have some other little favorites that I would jump into. So I have a book favorite, but it's technically... <laughs> I'm kind of lying because I haven't read the book yet. And in fact, 
I only just got the books this month in December. So it's not even a November fave. I don't know why I'm putting it in here, but I want <laughs> I want you guys to know of the books that I am hopefully going to be reading and I will talk about it more later. But so I have two books that I want to read this month. And the first one is Foe by Ian Reed. And I literally have absolutely no idea what this book is about at all. I <laughs> I wish I could give you a synopsis. I have absolutely no idea. I haven't even read the back of the book. Like, I just got this book. I truly don't know anything about it. And then that, the other one is My Dark Vanessa by Kate Russell. This book, I know, is about a um, teacher teenage romance. And not in, like, a good way. Like, I don't think it romanticizes it at all. I think it kind of shows, like the ugly parts of it and the manipulation and stuff like that. And um, I'm very intrigued by this book. I now with that new show out on Hulu, which I haven't seen yet, but the a teacher with Nick Robinson and that kind of like teacher romancy thing. It's just obviously not good. <laughs> not a good thing to be circling around, but it's just very intriguing at the same time. And like, this book I'm excited about because I think it shows obviously all the bad stuff and is kind of like hopefully when people read it they're going to be like oh yeah that's not good compared to like if you've ever watched Pretty Little Liars and Ezra and Arya obviously the main couple I mean everyone loved them including myself I loved them together and when I was in gosh when did that come out like middle school or high school when I was watching that I was totally like oh my god there's nothing wrong with this age gap who teacher student who <laughs> like this is totally fine and totally normal yeah it, that is super bad to obviously put on young girls or young boys um and so I'm glad that maybe this book will hopefully give like the bad signs to it so people will be more deterrent I don't know I have like I said I haven't even read the book so maybe it's not like that at all. Maybe it's totally romanticizing it and I shouldn't be reading it, but I'm going to read it anyway. <laughs> and so I wanted to put those two in there just so you guys know that I am reading. <laughs> I am a reader. I am doing it. So those are the two books that I'm going to be reading this month. But back to favorite things that I did in November. Let's go to movies. So um, really, actually, all three of my movie favorites are Christmas movies, which is odd because I watched them all in November, but I love Christmas movies and all the Christmas movies came out in November. So what else am I going to do than watch them in November? Ooh, actually, I think I might have four. I'm going to say four. <laughs> so let's start. Ooh, actually, okay. Sorry. <laughs> so all over the place. Okay. We're going to start with the top best movie, like actually good, and then go down in the ranking of bad movies because I do have a movie that is terrible, but is also part of my favorites. I don't know. We'll get into it. So my top favorite movie is Happiest Season on Hulu. It has Kristen Stewart and Aubrey Plaza in it. Oh my gosh, that movie was so good. Like, I don't even really want to say it was cute because, I mean, yes, it was cute, but also like the plot of the movie makes you so like, annoyed and angry like you're not like oh my god cute because the main character she um I don't even know who plays her and I don't even remember her name so the main character is dating Kristen Stewart and she has not come out to her parents yet that she is gay and she's like a grown adult so she really needs to get on that and she's been dating Kristen Stewart for like over a year they're living together Kristen Stewart wants to marry her so, like, this is obviously a very serious relationship, and her family has absolutely no idea that they are dating or that she's even gay at all. So, for some reason, the main character invites Kristen Stewart over to her family's place for the holidays, even though she has not come out. So, she's like, by the way, I haven't come out to my parents, so I'm not gay, you're not gay, and we're not together, we're only roommates. Just by the way. So... You know, that uh, <laughs> that just makes you mad just immediately. Like, I, me and my brother both watched this and we were like, fuck the main girl. Like, fuck you. You suck. Why are you doing this to Kristen Stewart? And like, 
that's what I mean is that it's not really cute because you're not rooting for that main girl at all. If anything, you're just rooting for Kristen Stewart, which who isn't at all times. So, but a really good movie. I definitely recommend watching it. And there's tons of funny parts to it. Like we were just laughing the entire time. So definitely good Christmas movie. Next one. This one. Ooh, wait, actually... Which order am I going to do this? Okay. These two are actually tied for like kind of good, kind of bad. Because they're kind of good, but kind of bad. So the first one is The Princess Switch 2 with Vanessa Hudgens. If you've ever seen the first one, you know that that is not a good movie. (laughs) So this kind of goes hand in hand. You know, it's not good, but it's also not the worst. Like I would say the second one is a lot better than the first one. And that could be saying a lot. That could be saying nothing. I don't know. (laughs) But the fun thing about the second one is that not only do we get to see two Vanessa Hudgens, the baker and the princess, but we also get a third Vanessa Hudgens. So take that what you will. You could think, oh my gosh, that's even worse. Like we don't need three of Vanessa Hudgens, which honestly I totally agree with. But there is that added, like, ooh, she's another character. (laughs) It's an interesting movie. Definitely watch it. I thought it was better than the first one. So that is my opinion. Um, The next one that's kind of in the same realm of, like, is this good, is this bad, was The Holiday with Emma Roberts and that Australian guy. I have no idea who he is. But that movie was interesting. It's, I mean, both of these movies are, like, Netflix originals, so... You can only go so far with how good are these movies going to be, but it was interesting. It was good. Like there was parts where I was like, yeah, that's, that's funny, but I don't know. It was also very crude humor, which ugh, that makes me sound like I'm such a prude or something, but like sometimes they would just say really inappropriate things where you're just like, okay, this just isn't even like that funny though. Like you could have not said that and it would have still been like a funny movie but I don't know that's just not my type of humor so maybe other people will totally enjoy it and think that it's super funny but yeah that one was interesting there is this one part and I don't want to spoil it but there's this one part in the movie where you never get any closure about it and it's like a big deal that happens and we have no idea what happens at the end like doesn't talk about it ever again so that kind of sucked (laughs) that was a little weird but not a terrible Christmas movie not like this next one this movie is actually the worst movie worst Christmas movie I've probably seen in a while and I religiously watch bad Christmas movies um they're my favorite thing to do like every Hallmark movie I will watch it and it's bad this one is so so bad like I don't even know what happened in the movie. It was that bad. (laughs) So this movie is Hometown Holiday. This is also on Netflix. Um, I have absolutely no idea who's in it. It's definitely like D-rated stars. Um, It's just so, so terrible. Uh, There is absolutely no plot. I don't know any of the characters' names. Um, Everyone is annoying. (laughs) Literally, um, this main girl... The only thing that I could focus on her was how deep her middle part was in her hair. (laughs) That sounds so ridiculous, but like it legitimately looked like there was just like a white strip going through the middle of her hair because that's how deep her scalp was. Like it was just showing. Anyway, (laughs) and then not only was I focusing on that, but the main guy that you're supposed to be obsessed with rooting for hottie mchottie is so (laughs) he's so ugly (laughs) i can't even stand it he just doesn't look like a real person he's so gross looking there's nothing about him that's appealing he's super boring it's just a bad movie guys so why am i putting on my favorites um i don't know (laughs) But I had to include it because it was a movie that I saw. (laughs) That's not even how favorites work, but here I am doing it anyway. I just, I have to talk about this movie. It's just really bad. And I want you guys to watch it. And I want you guys to tell me what you think about it. 
um, see if we're on the same page. If you guys love it, maybe you shouldn't be listening to this podcast anymore <laughs> because we just have two differing opinions. This will never work out. Well, it'll never go well. So those are the movies that I watched in November, all Christmas movies. You already know that December will be exactly the same. I will only listen to Christmas movies. Listen, watch Christmas movies. <laughs> Okay, so next I have my podcast fave. Now, this one, um, I wanted to obviously still put Thick and Thin by Katie Bellotti because she is queen. She is my favorite podcast. But I didn't want to do the same podcast every month, obviously, because that's just stupid. I kind of have two, actually, for my favorite podcasts that I've been listening to a lot recently. Um, I've been listening to Caitlin Bristow's Off the Vine podcast. She's from The Bachelorette, um, or I guess Bachelor and Bachelorette. She's part of Bachelor Nation, and I love her. She's so cute. She was just on Dancing with the Stars. She actually won, which is amazing. Um, she's just super cute, super funny. I love her podcast, and I love when she has Bachelor people on her podcast because I, ugh, I'm i in love with Bachelor Nation. <laughs> Should I be? Probably not, but something about them – is so intriguing and I want to be a part of it. I want to be a part of Bachelor Nation. If I could be on The Bachelor, I'm signing up immediately. Like immediately. Um, so I, I love to know in depth on their lives and I follow them all on Instagram and I want to know everything. Like literally, ugh, just recently, Caitlin interviewed Becca Kufrin, who is also former Bachelorette, part of Bachelor Nation. She just broke up with her racist boyfriend, and I'm so excited for her. <laughs> that was a long time coming, and I hated him. Like, literally, he had allegations against him while the show was going on, and she just stuck with him for two years. And, you know, that made me really not like her for a long time, obviously. Um, but the second that she broke up with him, and she's been way more active about her stances on BLM and just everything regarding that and she's been so great and I'm like yeah you know what you made a mistake it's okay <laughs> well it's kind of not okay but it's okay because you're learning from it you're doing better and you broke up with your racist boyfriend and that's all we can ask for so I'm so excited for her that was a great episode because she talked about the breakup and I was like hell yeah I need this tea so that was great <laughs> listen to her podcast if you like anything bachelor re related she's super great um, and then another podcast that I've been liking is What We Said with JC and Chelsea. They are super cute. They, I heard about their podcast um, through some YouTubers that I watch. They all listen to her pod, their podcast. Their podcast is very popular, so it's not crazy that I have stumbled upon it. Um, but I really like it. I've been listening to it a lot more recently, and I like their little segments, and they're super cute and funny. Um it's just some lighthearted stuff. I I want to get into some more podcasts that are a little more like dramatic or even probably just more educational because I'm definitely listening to podcasts that are just like, eh, la, la, la. but that's also what I like my podcast to be is kind of similar to theirs. Just like, you know, you just talk about your life. You just talk about random stuff um, that you find interesting and give advice and whatever. Like that's something that I very much relate to. So I love listening to very similar podcast types. So what we said is a really great podcast. If you haven't already listened to it, definitely go listen to it. Okay, so next I have my song favorites. Now these are actually going to be more album favorites. Because um, honestly, it's not even just one song. It's just the entire album. I love the entire thing. So the first one is Ariana Grande's album, obviously <laughs> she was one of my top artists in my spotify wrapped i love her she is a queen oh actually i need to add another one wow i just keep the ideas are flowing in her mind today i just have more albums that i want to talk about but okay ariana grande's album great favorite song is probably 34 plus 35 it's just so catchy and great and i love the music video so much i want to do that dance that everyone is doing on tiktok um, I don't know if I'm going to be great at it. And to be honest, I have absolutely nowhere in my house that I could do this. I don't have like hardwood, like just a area that is, has no furniture and it's just hardwood. I don't have that in my house. So I don't know how I'm going to do this, but 
I'm going to make it happen because I'm dedicated and I love it. <laughs> so love that album. Super great. She's a queen. Um, the next one that obviously I want to mention is Taylor Swift's album Folklore. I know that that came out obviously before November, but such a good album. And I've been listening to it a lot more recently because I just like listening to it when it's like in the colder weather because it just gives me fall vibes. So I was like, yeah, I need to listen to this now. And so that album is just amazing. I can't stop listening to it. She was also one of my top artists on my Spotify wrapped. So just makes sense. Um, the next one is the Casey Musgraves Christmas show album. Oh my God. It's so cute. I love Casey Musgraves. I actually am very much a fan of country music. So of course I'm going to love Casey Musgraves. She is just so sweet and she's not like, I mean the country, I'm putting this in quotes, air quotes right now. The country that I listen to is very much like pop country. In fact, my <laughs> my number one genre in the Spotify wrapped was contemporary country. That is what I listen to a lot. Um, just because I like it. <laughs> I have no other explanation. I know people don't like country music, but I enjoy it. I like to listen to it. And Casey Musgraves is definitely one of my favorite country artists. She's so cute and sweet. And her Christmas show, it came out in 2019. So if you guys have ever seen it, you know what I'm talking about. Um, I think it's also on Amazon Prime, I'm pretty sure. Oh my gosh, it's so cute. She has so many um, guests that come on it, like Troy Sivan, their song Glittery is super great. I think she just came out with like a updated version of it too, so gotta listen to that. Um, she also has Zoe Deschanel. Oh my god, that sounds cute. She also has Camila Cabello though, so like, ugh. <laughs> she made some poor decisions, but it's okay. Um, but that is a really good album and perfect for um, the Christmas time. So come and listen to that. And then, of course, Miley Cyrus's album. I actually haven't even listened to it yet, but I already am putting it on my favorites. I just know that it's going to be good. Like, I just know. I can't believe I haven't sat down and listened to it yet. But when I listen to a new album, I have to listen like from the beginning over and over and over again before I'm like, you know, before, like, it takes a while for me to absorb the songs and, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> Is this getting annoying? I don't know. But it takes me a long time to, like, digest new music. So I just haven't sat down and listened to that album over and over and over again yet. But I already love um, Midnight Sky and her rendition of Heart of Glass. So I just know that this album is going to be good. And I um, had listened to a little bit of that song with Dua Lipa. I forget what it's called now. I think it's like Prisoner or something. That one is really good. So I, I just, that's why I'm putting her this album in the favorites. I already know it's going to be good. So listen to Miley Cyrus if you haven't yet. Okay, so those are all my song favorites. Finally, we have my TV show faves. So um, I'm going to be honest, my friends are going to be really, really disappointed in this first one because <laughs> so as you guys know, as I said in my first episode that I was rewatching The Vampire Diaries and that's been going great. I've been loving every minute of it. In fact, I'm kind of like in a zone where I don't even know what's going to happen next because I don't think I've seen that show all the way through. So it's really exciting to get to a part where you're like, oh, wait, now it's like a new show. <laughs> like, I don't know what's going to happen. And this is fun. So now that I came to that part of the show, I'm now in, you know, I'm invested. I'm starting to re like, you know, every episode is different. So I'm kind of not in the mood to watch a new show, another new show, you know, like I don't need two I don't need two new shows, even though even though I have another show on here that is new. But <laughs> just bear with me, OK? I don't want to be too invested in so many new shows because I'm just going to be like, it's just too much, you know? And so I had to add another comforting show that I've already seen the whole entire show of. And that show is How I Met Your Mother. I have restarted it and I am obsessed with it. I... I'll be honest, it's not like How I Met Your Mother is good <laughs> or groundbreaking. I mean, 
it's just like a comfort show. It's like The Office. It's like Friends. And I'm not saying those shows are bad, obviously. Like, they're very popular shows. People like these shows. But, you know, it's not like... <laughs> I don't even know how to describe it. It's not amazing, you know? It's just it's just a sitcom show that's funny, and I like to just throw it on when I want to just zone out and watch something that I've already watched before, and it's comforting, and it's funny, and that's where I'm at. <laughs> that's where I'm at with that one, and I have really been enjoying it. I'm at the part right now where Barney is falling in love with Robin, and that is my favorite part. They are my top OTP. Um, in my list of OTPs in my life. And it just makes me so sad that they actually don't even end up together because of the stupid last episode, but I won't get into it. <laughs> We're not going to get angry today. Everything's fine. But yeah, that um, that's what I've been watching uh, as my comfort show. And the reason why I know my friends are going to be mad at me is because so many of them have been wanting me to watch Shit's Creek, which I want to watch. It's not that I don't want to watch it. <laughs> I'm just letting all my friends know right now I'm gonna watch it okay it's just I'm in a place where I need to not be invested in a new show <laughs> it's annoying of myself though because I know I'm gonna like it like I know I'm gonna watch the show and be like oh yeah that's funny like yeah that's good like that's what I mean where How I Met Your Mother is not like a good show where Shit's Creek is a good show like I know that that's gonna be good and I'm gonna like it so I'm just being annoying about it that's basically what it is <laughs> I just just being annoying but so yeah anyway very long-winded way to say I'm re-watching How I Met Your Mother and I am enjoying it um and the other show that is actually a new show that I'm watching is Virgin River I already watched the first season with my family and we were obsessed just immediately um it's not a very complex show <laughs> I mean, I don't want to be mean. It's like a good show, but it reminds me a lot of Heart of Dixie. And I love that show. That show is just, it's another like comforting, sitcom -y, cute, cute show. And this is different because it's definitely more dramatic. Like it's a drama compared to like a sitcom, but it has the small town feel. Um, the main character falls in love with a bartender. <laughs> And she's a doctor, and she, the doctor that she works for is actually the same exact actor. Like, okay, this is, let me try and explain this. So the doctor, there's a main doctor. I forget his name, but it's a guy. So Guy Doctor in Heart of Dixie is also in Virgin River, and he plays Guy Doctor. So he's Guy Doctor in two <laughs> shows, and it's just the same thing. Okay, does that make sense? <laughs> feel like I'm explaining this terribly but basically it's Heart of Dixie as a drama there we go that's what I should have said but here we are anyway so that's been really good <laughs> um, my family and I have been obsessed with it since the first season and my mom literally once we ended it she immediately was like okay where's the second season where when are we watching it and I'm like mom I have absolutely no idea like <laughs> I don't even know when this came out like it could be like another year from now but it just happened that Virgin River came out, I think, in 2019. So the second season just came out recently, like literally over Thanksgiving weekend. So we're only three episodes in and there's 10 episodes. So we still have a little bit more to go, but we're probably going to binge it really soon. Um, our requirement is that we ha have to all be together. So to watch it because someone's going to get, you know, offended if not everyone's together. So it kind of takes a little bit of time when we all have to be in the same spot to watch it, but it's okay. I'm excited about it. Um, and yeah, so those are kind of all of my November favorites. I was going to make that brief, but I guess I did not, but that's okay. Um, I like talking about my favorites a lot, <laughs> so I hope you guys enjoy it as well. So the next part of this podcast, I want to talk about December dreams. Um, the nice little alliteration. I kind of wanted to talk about this because even though that it's the end of the year, I think there are still things that we can accomplish in the last month. And there are things that we can look forward to. And there are things that we can just work towards. Gosh, can you even, sorry, side note. Can you believe it's the end of the year? Like, oh my God, <laughs> 2020 ban. 
That, ugh. This has been the craziest year, seriously, ever. I mean, I was just talking to my friend, and we were just like, this This time is just crazy. I mean, we have never been in a situation like this. I can't believe it's already, like, upcoming on a year. I mean, I remember celebrating New Year's Eve last year, and we just had no idea what this year was going to have. And now we're literally in the last month. Like, we're done. In just a few weeks, 2020 is over and we're into 2021. And who knows what that's going to bring, but let's let's think positive, positive vibes only. So anyway, so some dreams that I have for December. Obviously, I have some podcast dreams. <laughs> um, I have just been so excited and so motivated with the podcast like I can't believe we already have a month under our belt like this is crazy it just went by so fast like it didn't even feel like it (laughs) wow clearly lost for words um I just can't believe I've already been doing this for a month I feel like I've been doing it for so much longer but not in a bad way like it just feels so natural and comfortable for me so I'm really excited and I hope that obviously everyone else is enjoying it. To go back to what I was talking about um, in the beginning of the podcast, we finally made it to Apple Podcasts. Woo! Um, this is so exciting for me. Like, I am so, so happy that we're finally on Apple Podcasts. Because like I said, I mean, this is where I listen to my podcasts. So it's crazy to see all my favorite podcasters and then I see my own podcast just like sitting in my little library like hello (laughs) hello look at you and it's just so exciting and it just um it makes me really happy and wow excited (laughs) how many times can I say that but honestly I'm excited to see where the podcast will go just with everything and um some dreams that I have for the podcast I have a lot of ideas that I want to do at least into the new year. I kind of already planned out this month's podcast episode, so things will be sort of similar to November's. I'm going to try and make it a little different, but like obviously like today's episode, we're doing another favorites. I might do that every month. I don't know. Haven't decided yet, but I have a lot of ideas for future episodes. One thing that I would love, love, love to do with my podcast is maybe have some bonus episodes of some advice column kind of things where you guys can send me questions and I'll answer you know your questions and your concerns give you some advice Um, I would just love to make this podcast kind of like a community area for people Um, I just I really like connecting with people in that way where we kind of like open up and talk about things and I know like not only you know if some people have a specific problem there could be a lot of other people that have the same problem and so if I could give advice to a lot of people for that same thing that'd be great and I just I don't know I just always like doing that for my friends and so I would love to do that for even more people and help more people out and I think that would just be super fun and so obviously that requires you guys (laughs) to send in um questions and concerns and blah 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 so I'm hoping with my podcast I can grow and my audience can grow and we can get to that point where I can do that. I definitely have some ideas of doing some advice even, um, you know, without people sending things in just to like begin with and start off. And so I hope you guys are excited for things like that. I also want to, I have this idea that I think would be cute of where I'm baking or even maybe just uh, like journaling or painting or, you know, doing something creative and I podcast at the same time and we can just chat, have a great time. I don't know. I have a lot of ideas and so I'm excited. I'm excited to continue growing and now that we are on Apple Podcasts, that just means even more people can listen to it. In fact, if you guys, um, if you want to leave me a review, that would be so appreciated Um, when, you know, podcasts get more reviews, Apple podcasts will see that obviously people are enjoying this podcast and they will push it out to others who might also like it. So it would help me out so, so much. If you go and leave a review, give me your honest opinions. I mean, please don't hold back. If you freaking hate it, let me know and I will change some things around. But 
Um, please leave me a review and let me know what you guys are thinking about everything. And um, if you like it, other people can also join us and then we can be a cute little, a cute little podcast family. And I would love that. So I'm really, um, I have a lot of dreams for the podcast and I'm very excited on the direction that we are going. Um, I also have some job dreams that um, I'm excited to talk about actually. And that's been hard because I mean, like I have said throughout this entire time, jobs have been giving me a lot of stress. I have been very stressed about it, honestly, since high school. I, for the longest time, I have felt that I never really had a passion with what I wanted to do career-wise. Because let's be honest, if I could have the career of just doing my hobbies and living life and somehow I have money to support myself and I didn't have to work every day yeah I would like to do that (laughs) who wouldn't want to do that I mean duh but like I don't know there's just not a lot of things that I'm super passionate about work-wise and I've honestly just dealt with that like since the moment you kind of start thinking about it like when I was 18 when I had to figure out where I was going to college, I was like, well, I don't really care because I don't really know what I want to do. So like, what's, you know, because some people know, like, and I'm, ugh, I am so envious of the people who know exactly what they want to do in high school or even just the beginning of college or just even later in college, whatever. It is so awesome for those people who just know exactly what they want to do and they want to do that for their career and they go off and they study for it and they learn and they do great and then they're amazing and they're awesome so props to you guys um I wish I was you but I'm just not I just I've just never had that passion and there's just a I don't know there's a lot of big question marks floating through my mind but I have happy news I feel like I have maybe found something that I think I am actually passionate about. So, um, (laughs) so I wanted to talk about a job that I applied for. I'm not going to go into too much detail just because obviously I don't know what's going to happen. And so I don't want to jinx anything, but I also want to do like, I want to tell you guys obviously what I'm doing and I want to send some good vibes. So if you guys Um, If you send out some good vibes that maybe I get this job, that would be super awesome. But um, I applied to this local boutique um, in my town and I'm really excited about it. They donate part of their sales to help stop human trafficking, which I think is amazing. Obviously, I would love to work for a company that, you know, does that (laughs) who gives back to the community and especially towards a huge cause like that I think that's just amazing and I would want to center my life around something towards that that's helping others and also um I really like boutiques (laughs) I think they're so cute I love clothes and fashion and that is a huge passion of mine like actually um I love dressing in cute clothes and not to toot my own horn, but I do think I kind of have a nice sense of fashion. I talked about that before. Um, I think I wear cute clothes. <laughs> and so this job, I would be able to help style people um, and choose clothes for themselves. And I would love to help people do that. I mean, I help my friends do that all the time. I would love to get paid to do that. I mean, who wouldn't want to do that? That would be awesome. So I'm really excited about this. I, again, I have no idea what's going to happen. So if something goes wrong, I'll let you guys know. And and it's okay. Like, if I don't get the job, it's not the end of the world. But it would be pretty cool if I did. So definitely um, send some good vibes out there for me if you want. (laughs) Um, But something that I, that kind of goes along with this, that I um, feel like I found what I want to do is... I think sometime in the future, I don't know when, like when I'm more established, whatever, I want to be able to open my own boutique. Maybe, maybe just online, maybe in person and online, maybe just in person. I'm not exactly sure, obviously, all the logistics, but 
I think that is something that I would really want to do for myself and maybe even have some of my own um, like projects in there because one of the things that drove me to applying to this boutique is one, it would be just really great experience and I think I would really enjoy it and I would make money and it's, you know, it's a nice, good job. And the best thing about this is that not only would I be able to work there, but I would be able to have some time for myself and focus on things that I really want to get good at. Um, there's a lot of things that I want to do like creatively. I really want to get into hand lettering. Um, I think it's so cool and so fun, the people that do that. And you can make a lot of graphics with that or even like make stickers or, you know, there's there's so many things that you could do with hand lettering and I think it's so cool and so pretty and I've never really loved my handwriting so if I could improve it in some way super awesome I would love to do that so if I like made some pieces with my hand lettering or maybe like I would also like to get into painting or drawing you know something more creative in that sense if I could get really good at that and I could have like pieces of my own in my own boutique that would be really cool or not only my own stuff but I would love to have other people's stuff like maybe local artists or um, a lot of my friends are also so creative and so awesome so I would love to have their stuff in my store um, I would also love to have clothes that I could pick out in style for people like I said I love fashion so I know I know it's on the top of the trends I know what I like I know what matches uh, my town's aesthetic. <laughs> um, so that is something that really interests me. I've been getting really into candle making and so I could have candles and maybe some plants and jewelry. There's, there's just a lot of things that I would really love to do with this. And I've actually, <laughs> I have never even said this out loud yet. I haven't even told a soul that this is my this is my dream of what I want to do. Um, so that's kind of exciting. You know, I kind of finally found something that really interests me and really motivates me. And I want to do it like I want to do anything to do it. And so I'm excited. <laughs> I hope that obviously things align and things will work out that I can do this. And I think that if I can get this experience at this job, that would be really great. And I, you know, I've gone back and forth on my feelings about this because not that it's completely, like, totally away from what my um, major was. I majored in marketing. So it's always great to have a business degree and a marketing degree is really awesome and I totally enjoyed my major. But I've just been feeling a lot of guilt because, you know, the the job that I'm, the biggest dream that I want is not like, you know... A marketing manager it's not something directly using my degree and I think there's just you know there's a lot of pressure on people who who go to college and if you get a certain degree that you need to get a job in that exact field because you paid for it and you studied for it and you should do it and I know that it's not true and everyone's life is different and you can totally change whatever you want to do I mean like my mom for instance she she went to college and she got um, her degree in retail merchandising, I think is what it was. Um, and she's a hairstylist now. <laughs> so completely different. You know, she had to go back and do some classes for beauty school, like totally different realm. And so it's not like it's literally no one else but me pressuring my own self about it because all of my family members have done different things with their lives. I mean, like. My brother, yes, he kind of went with his major, but like, who knows? He like, he could change his mind. He could do something different. There's still so much life ahead of us. So I don't know. Obviously, for the longest time, I just kind of, I kind of kept going back and forth like, okay, maybe I should get a marketing job because that's the degree that I went with and that's what I should do. You know, that's what's right. But I just had a lot of anxiety about it. And honestly, it just, it just wasn't something that interested me. And like, why am I going to waste my time doing something that just doesn't interest me when I do have like 
when I finally found something that I want to do, you know, like, am I just going to waste it or like go after it? And so finally, I decided to go after it. I am deciding right now. I'm putting my foot down. Um, I want to do this. I want to go towards my dream and, you know, who knows what's going to happen. Um, life happens. I could totally change routes. And the greatest thing of me having this degree is that um, if I ever need to, you know, completely change my life and if I decide I do want to work like directly in my major and go in the marketing field, I can. There is nothing going to stop me. I have a degree behind me. I could even go get my master's and learn even more about marketing if I really wanted to later in life. You know what I mean? Like, it's just now that I finally found something that I super want to do and go towards, I just think that this is the time that I should do it. And I don't think there's any sense trying to force myself to do something that I'm just not interested in. Like, for what? Like, do it later. If that's just what you need to do later, like, do what you want now because you know what you want now. There's no point in stalling. There's no point in holding yourself back. And so, yeah, so that's kind of that's kind of a huge dream that I just plopped on you guys. <laughs> Obviously, again, I have no idea what's going to happen in life. And so by next episode, I could be like, hey, guys, scratch it. <laughs> Never mind. But I, I, I feel pretty confident about it. Like I this is something that I think would be so cool. And I'm so passionate about it and everything that goes into it. And so. I, I would love to make this happen. And so I'm going to try. I'm going to try my hardest. And so first step is the job that I applied to. So again, send out the good vibes, please. Um, they did get back to me being like, we will uh, call you um, if you get an interview. You know, we're looking through all the applications and it'll be in the next few weeks. So just just keep your minds open about me <laughs> getting this job or at least getting an interview. I'm not going to lie. If I get an interview, I feel like I would kill it. Like, I'm not going to lie. I just feel really confident about it. And I think that's a good sign because before, when I was applying to all these marketing jobs, I just did not feel confident at all. And I know that, like, sometimes that does go hand in hand. Like, you know, things that you are really interested in, you could just, you know, not be confident in yourself and you'll be like, oh, I don't know. I might mess it up. But with this job, I just feel like I would do a really good job. I feel like I would be interested. I would be motivated. I would be happy. And so it's like, yeah, I, I'm i going to apply to that place because I want to do it. So, wow. <laughs> um, that kind of wraps up today's episode. Just some just some little dreams for you guys. I hope this motivates you if you ever needed um, a sign that you need to follow your dreams and do whatever the hell you want. Here it is here. I am saying it right now. Just go do it. Do it. If you have the means, do it. Like don't live your life just doing something because you think you have to, or you think it'll please other people because guess what? No one Everyone is going to have an opinion and not everyone's opinion is going to be on your side and you're never going to satisfy other people with what you're doing. You know, you need to satisfy yourself and you need to go after your own dreams and not worry about everyone else. Just focus on you. So that's uh, that's today's episode. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope you guys are excited for a brand new month full of episodes. Um, again, go leave me a review. Uh, please let me know what you guys are thinking of this podcast. And I will see you all next week in a brand new episode. Bye. 